this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the HyperX Clutch Wireless. This is a multi-platform controller that will work with both PC and mobile devices, and anything that will connect via Bluetooth, but it also uses USB-C wired connection, as you can see here, and it comes with its own mobile clip that you can plug into the top, so more on that in a second. And this controller will set you back around $50.00 or 50 pounds sterling, which makes it remarkably affordable. When I got it out of the box, I was initially struck by the weight of it though, because it's actually fairly weighty. It feels quite premium in the hand by comparison to the price, so it was more than I was expecting. Now you'll see a standard sort of Xbox style layout here with the D-pad, the control sticks, and the other things. And on the underside, there's a switch to switch between 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth and wired mode. So you have the option to use those in a variety of positions. Now, there are some hints of things of interest here, and I want to go into a little bit of depth on the various things. For example, not only the weight of it, but also the trigger action, because I notice there's a bit of a squeak that I'll show you later on in one of the triggers. You'll see that it weighs in at around 226 grams, so fairly hefty. It also has some nice grips down either side and make it comfortable and easy to hold on to. Now this is a mobile and PC controller, so it'll work with both. Now I'm not a mobile gamer, I don't play games on my phone, but it comes with a pretty handy clip that you can just slot into place on top. It's easy to remove and easy to install, and obviously that's extendable as well. So if you are the sort of person that likes to play games on your phone or on other devices, you can do so. It's really easy to connect it over Bluetooth as well. You just flick that switch on the underside or at the bottom into Bluetooth mode then press and hold the home button to put it into pairing mode and then you'll see it pop up on the device you're using so you can see the process here on my phone you'll see the HyperX clutch wireless appears in the list and then you can just select it and then you have the ability to use that and to play around with it like so pretty straightforward setup and this connectivity is sort of runs through into the other devices as well so if you're using it on pc for example you use that 2.4 gigahertz dongle that you saw earlier on plug it into your pc flick it into wireless mode and it automatically pairs and just gets going but more on that in a little while so i wanted to try and see if we could get on with mobile games with it so i tried call of duty mobile which i haven't played before and turns out it doesn't work with a controller so that was a bad example as I said, I'm not a mobile gamer, but I did want to try it out with some other things. So I did connect it up to my Steam Deck, which seems a bit pointless because the Steam Deck obviously has controls on it. But it's a demo of the fact that it's multi-compatible, so you can connect it up to multiple different devices. So I'd already paired it with my phone, but then you can go into the Bluetooth settings on something else and pair it with something else with relative ease as well. So here you can see it in action working with the Steam Deck. There were some quirks to this in that some of the buttons weren't working properly, but obviously you could reprogram, remap them within the Steam Deck software if you wanted to do this. Now there's no real need for doing this, but obviously if the controls wore out on the Steam Deck over time, I would have the option of using a Bluetooth controller instead, so it gives some flexibility. Now moving on to PC, I tried out on a variety of games to see how it got on, and the controls are intuitive and standard because it has the Xbox layout to it, and if you're playing games via Steam, it's automatically recognized, so all the buttons work as they should, with easy access to all the usual controls. So it's really familiar to be able to just leap into it and play around with it. There were a few things that I did notice as I was doing this, though. One of them was a squeak in the R2 trigger, so there's a bit of a squeak going on there, like a metallic ping that I'll let you hear in a second so you can experience that. But otherwise, the experience was really smooth, apart from one other small point, which was the connectivity. And what I found was, after a little while of playing, there was an issue with the connection between the controller and the dongle where the connection would drop. And this was interesting because it was across the room. So I was actually playing with my camera on one side of the room, my computer on the other side. So what I found was the connection wasn't that solid. You can see it was working quite well here, but then it started to drop out and you can see the lights flashing on the controller because that's basically trying to reconnect. So there's some interference potentially there. So it's worth bearing in mind distance might be an issue. The other thing here is the sound of the squeak. So you can hear just that noise of the ping of the trigger and it's not the same as L2 as it is in R2. So there's a discrepancy between the two there. So some minor points to bear in mind Feels good and premium in the hand, good quality to it, but I think the button sounds are a bit loud 
And also that sort of sound from the triggers might be a bit grating for some. But this is an affordable controller, so you've got to expect some compromise. Obviously, it's not a premium flagship of a controller by any means. And yet it's pretty capable. It has some nice design to it. Matte finish, you can see here, those grips on the side that you can see with the texture is actually a rubberized finish as well. So it's really easy to hold on to. It's comfortable in the hand. It's got a nice shape to it. Now they claim about 19 hours of battery life. Obviously it doesn't have removable batteries. It's got a built-in battery. You plug in and use it in USB-C. So you plug it into your PC with USB-A connection and USB-C into the controller to charge it up. And I found that it seems to last pretty well. It's not the longest lasting controller out there, but it is decent enough for a good few sessions before you have a problem. And obviously those indicators that you saw, the indicator lights will let you know when you're running low on charge. So all told for the money, a pretty decent controller worth checking out if you're looking to save some money and still get a good gaming session in. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.